All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Yvonne, to both Tarsus Spiritist Society. And uh, Yvonne is going to present the studies on moral persons for us today. And uh, Yvonne Doyle, uh, Secretary of the Allan Kardec Studies Center in Joanna de Angelis in Quebec, is the former president of the Canadian Spiritist Council from 2015 to 2018 and translator of the books Psicologia da Gratidão and Sexualidade e Saúde Espiritual. He is trained in biology, educational psychology, and international relations, and is a professional manager. Yvonne is married with two children. Yep. Welcome again, Yvonne. And now the floor is yours to take us through this journey. Thank you. Thank you for your warm welcome. Uh, I will now uh, share my window. Uh, just need to do the right thing here. Okay. Okay. So do, do you see the, the PowerPoint? Yes. Great because I'm working with two computers or so. <laughs> okay, great. Well, thank you for inviting me. And um, it's it's my second uh, visit, if I can say so, to, to your center. And um, so I'm very pleased on, of the invitation and uh, very pleased to, to meet people uh, studying spiritism in the language of, of the country. Uh, here in Quebec, we do most in French and, and I see that you do most in English, so uh, congratulations uh, to, 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 to go with the people around us. So th this uh, presentation uh, was done first at uh, the annual conference um, of the Canadian Spiritist Council. And um, the, the, the invitation was uh, aimed at uh, more persons, which I enlarged to more persons and moral laws. And uh, we'll see later on that uh, now is the time to take a step forward. So uh, what is a moral person? Of course, through the history of uh, humanity, uh, human and social rules changed over time and across cultures. So we, women and men progressed to, be, to become moral persons, but we, we keep within us the traces of our early stages of moral development. And in this uh, continuum, the advent of spiritism and of moral persons is part of the continued realization of the divine plan. Well, I I'll ask you to indulge with my English because it's my second or my third language. So <laughs> I do my best. Now, now Portuguese is on top of, <laughs> of my list of languages. So, to, to begin with, uh, we will go back a few thousand years and provide the, an overview of different models of moral laws that influenced us. Uh, as, as we know, we were part of these times through reincarnation, and so we continue to understand better every incarnation. So Moses is, is known as the first prophet of Judaism and of all monotheist religions and uh, he is credited with uh, the Torah uh, which means uh, the doctrine the teaching the law of Judaism and um, it is generally said that Moses wrote the Ten Commandments but in fact in the Torah there are as many as 613 commandments according to various interpretation this amounts to uh, 365 prohibitions and 248 orders forming the whole religious, social and food laws to which every Jew must submit. And the Torah contains uh, moral advancement uh, to the, the era before it. It brings with it the law of Talion, as you know, everybody, the the, the, the eye for eye or the tooth for tooth, which today we, we feel as uh, something 
um, uh, kind of uh, restricted as a moral advancement. But in that era, it was an advancement because before that, uh, retaliation was total. So at that time to, to go with a proportionate uh, vengeance, if, if we can say so, was already a moral advancement to those people. And then later on in, in the, those texts of the Torah and the Hebrew Bible, we find as well some content that um, support replacing uh, the material punishment by itself by monetary compensation. So that was an, another advancement, a moral advancement of that time. At the same time, which is uh, around 1000 years before Christ, and close to uh, that territory in Iran, Persia at the time, there was another messenger of God, Zoroaster, who transmitted the positive existential philosophy through written poems. So we, we so today we still have some text of Zoroaster. And what he thought uh, was, well, even more interesting because he was talking about the coming of the kingdom of justice where all humans are workers who work for the one God. He was talking about the soul pre-existing before birth and pursuing its eternal life until it is fully purified. He was as well teaching that uh, we have to preserve nature and cease to condemn animal through sacrifice, sacrifices. He has welcomed then alcohol consumption because it, it is difficult to have a clear mind with alcohol. In fact, Zoroaster uh, taught many teachings that stand for 1000 years. The Zoroastrism was the religion of the state for more than 1000 years. So he, he brought uh, forward all a, a kind, all a, a group of people in that territory at, at this time. Still at that same time in China, we, we meet with uh, Fo He, who developed a whole system of moral rules and a philosophical code, the Yai King, or known as the Book of Changes, which is based on the balance of yin and yang. He also invented the traditional medicine and the ritual of wedding as a social rule. So he, he brought quite an advancement to his society at that time. And still in China around 500 years before Christ, Confucius, which is even more known, taught the values to live in harmony and in union with the others. And he encouraged study, personal reflection and respectful critical thinking. That, that sounds a little bit like uh, what Kardec said to us study, personal reflection, and respectful critical thinking. And he encouraged sincerity as well through his positive morality, which he was teaching. Confucianism was the state religion in China for almost 2000 years. So this is as well a set of moral rules that influence a large group of people. And then at, at that same time, 500 years before Christ, Siddhartha Gautama or Buddha, more known as Buddha, taught nonviolence and universal truths based on the practice of correct thought, correct speech, correct action, correct profession, correct effort, correct attention, and correct contemplation. So what he was teaching was to be in equilibrium with the universe and ourselves, the correct action. And this is for him the way to free oneself from the sufferings of life and its causes 
through the voluntary and complete erasure of the self until reaching enlightenment. So the, 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 the path or the way that Buddha taught was the inner way, the one of erasing the self to get to a universal truth. And as well, Buddhism influenced a lot of people with its moral uh, teaching and all rules. Buddhism is still today the fourth most popular religion in the world after Christianism, Islam, and Hinduism. If we go a little bit closer to us, we find in Greece, 400 years before Christ, Socrates, who developed a moral philosophy based on know thyself. Socrates was a philosopher who taught inner dialogue dialogue based on reason in the search of wisdom. And the essential, the essential principle of his theology is that God is good and that he therefore only produces good. And Plato, who lived at the same time in the same community, presented him in his writings and developed the Platonism around those principles. And the gospel according to the spiritism, as, as you know, presents Socrates and Plato as predecessors of Jesus. So they are in that continuity to our moral progression and to the teaching of moral rules to the humanity, the becoming of moral persons. In fact, the various messengers of the word of God have transmitted universal truth such as the golden rule, which is found in all cultures under various forms. So this is the golden rule is the love the other as yourself and love God with that we find in Christ's teachings. And for Socrates, for instance, it was we must not respond to injustice with injustice nor harm any man, whatever he has done to us. And to suffer injustice is better than to commit it. So all these messengers of the word of God taught that golden rule in various forms. And what we see is that all these messengers influenced those societies at that time, which is during thousands of years, centuries and centuries, as you see on the map, the, 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 the traveling of the people was bringing to other communities all those teachings. So even today, after 3000 years, we are influenced one another by these teachings and a large number of, of them are still with us today. The various messengers of the word of God prepared for the coming of Jesus, as said Emmanuel in Chico Xavier books, A, Cam A Camino da Luz and Voices du Grand Alain. In fact, Emmanuel said that Jesus coordinated the presence of these messengers to prepare for his coming. He said Zoroaster, Confucius, Buddha, and Socrates were great and venerable teachers who revealed the way to us. And at some other places, he talked about, as well about Moises and Fohi and others. So it's very interesting to, as you know, <laughs> of course, to, to read these texts written by Chico Xavier of Emmanuel explaining to us the, the whole plan of Jesus. What is special about Jesus, according to Emmanuel? Jesus Christ in associating lesson and the example is the loving and wise master who has taught us to walk the path. This is, as we will see, this is a um, high level quality of Jesus that we talked all the time in our centers 
how he is a model, a guide, how he gave to us an example. The first teaching of Jesus public life is the Sermon of, on the Mount, which already contains the gist of its message, including the great universal commandment, the golden rule. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then later on, Jesus added another commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. So he continued to develop his teaching until his latter teachings. Even today, we must make efforts every day to respond to evil with good. Well, at least for myself. Jesus reinforces the commandment of love repeatedly in his teachings, alerting us to the law of Talion, which is recorded deep into us. It was said eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them to the other cheek also. It's interesting to, to take that teaching of Jesus in relation with the law of Talion, because if we look only to the text, when someone hits you, give the other cheek. It doesn't make all the sense that it does if you put it in comparison in relation with the law of Talion, which was eye for eye, tooth for tooth. Jesus said, well, no, this was said before. You heard that before. Now it's different. Now it's the law of love. So don't take an eye for an eye. Don't take a cheek for a cheek. Above all, Jesus taught us by example throughout his life. In all situations, he was faithful to his mission until the end. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Jesus also guides us toward inner peace as a way to happiness and to better practice the divine laws in the midst of life difficulties, as we see in various texts of John and Matthews, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You believe in God, believe also in me. His advice is particularly important in these times of pandemia where we are destabilized emotionally and physically. How does one react? Is it in peace or with agitation? Jesus goes on saying, Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me and he will be loved by my father and I too will love them and show myself to them. And then following on in this path of the human evolving to a moral person more and more through perfection, through reincarnation, then Jesus announced the comforter. In his final teaching, Jesus launched an important prophecy. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. bear. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. 
So Jesus himself tells us that he did not tell us everything because we will not be able to receive everything, but he will send us the spirit of truth to complete his teaching. And he will give us another comforter who will accompany us eternally to become moral persons. So that's, that's the plan of Jesus. That's the one that keeps us in his heart. And said to us, I am the path, truth, and life. So Jesus announced the return of the spirit of truth as a comforter for mankind while Jesus stays with us as our guide and model. So let's talk a, a bit of the spiritual doctrine that obviously you know of, but just to, to take some high points of it. So the spiritual doctrine is not the revelation of a person, but the accumulation and the communication of the observations of a large number of spirits all over the earth. It is a promised comforter. Here are some of the spirits who have collaborated with Kardec, and this is a short list, not to, to bear too long with you. St. August, Augustine, St. Louis, Plato, St. Paul, St. Vincent de Paul, Swedenborg, the philosopher, St. John, Socrates, Benjamin Franklin, Delphine de Girardin, poet, Vianney Das, parish priest, Hahnemann, an homeopathic doctor, the spirit Emmanuel, Isabel, queen of Spain, Carita, one martyr of Rome, Henry Ein, a German poet, François Arago, an astronomer and head of state at his time, and of course, the spirit of truth and many others. So that's, that's a high quality of the spiritist doctrine. It's not the doctrine of one man. It's a large number of spirits inspired by God, by the message of love, by the law of love, justice, and charity. And the spirit of truth himself invites us to welcome spiritism in order to progress in happiness. As my words, this is a message from the spirit of truth in the gospel according to spiritism. So it's not the whole message, of course, it's kind of two pages, but here are some excerpts. As my words in the past have done, so must spiritism remind the, the incredulous that above them reigns the immutable truth, which is the existence of the good God, the great God, who causes the plants to germinate and the waves to rise up. But man, with ungratefulness, has moved away from the straight and wide path, which leads to the kingdom of my father, and has followed the bleak pathways of impiety. Spiritist, love one another. That is the first precept. Educate yourselves is the second. So we see that there is the insistence of the same message about loving one another, about living the law of love in our lives, and always, always, always educating ourselves, meditating, reflecting. And as, said, as the Spirit of Truth said, the virtues will grow and develop as a cedar tree in us. Listen no more to the voice of the prophets and apostles, but listen instead to those who no longer live upon heart and who proclaim, pray and believe. Death is the resurrection and life is an ordeal you seek, during which the virtues you have cultivated will grow and develop, even as the cedar tree. 
This is a list of virtues, not to read all at once, but we know that generally we exercise one virtue in particular more intensively during one's reincarnation. So from some uh, works that were, was done by our friend Alirio in Brazil, as he taught in, in some seminar, working on the, the proposal that we take for ourselves in a reincarnation, we work more specifically over one virtue, still having that impulse to do better in that era, area. And then the comforter will be in us, in our conscience, in our feeling, and in our actions, following the example of Jesus, as we let ourselves enter into spiritism. And then as we listen to the good intuitions that our spiritual friend, friends give to us all the time to help us. The comforter will be in us. Spiritism is based on universal truths, the divine laws, which are true for Socrates, for Confucius, for the Buddha and for each of us, because they do not depend on the interpretation of one or the other or on the changing context. And as we know, divin laws lies in our conscience. The laws of nature or moral laws or divin laws are eternal and unchanging. And the first law is the law of love, charity and justice. So these are useful. We'll not go through all of, <laughs> all of them tonight, but each one of these laws could be the, the subject <laughs> of, of one little seminar or one little presentation. But it's useful to reflect on these so that we can understand that there is more than our habits, that we are always doing the same things, we can evolve and we can have profoundly in us a connection, whether it is with the law of love, charity and justice, whether it is with the law of freedom, with the law of cause and effect and all the others. So reflecting on the, on the divine laws help us to understand, to change and to become moral persons as well. And that is one other thing that is brought to us by spiritism. And the gospel according to spiritism also gives us a description of the moral persons to help us understand, feel and act accordingly. Here are some excerpts that I have put in short sentences so that we can work with them. Truly moral persons are those who practice the law of justice, love and charity in its greatest purity. If they question their conscience about the action, they ask themselves if they have done all the good they could. Persons imbued with the sentiment of charity and love for their neighbor do the good for its own sake without expecting anything in return, and they repay evil with good. So this brings us back to the primacy of the law of justice, love and charity, how we can guide our life with it every day, asking to ourselves, what I am doing, is it just? Is it loving? Is it charitable? 
and then doing that we try to do the best out of every day out of every action moral persons have faith in god's goodness justice and wisdom they know that nothing happens without god's permission so they submit to the divine will in everything they know that all the vicissitudes of life all its sorrows and all its disappointments are trials or expiations and they accept them without complaining those who are subordinate understand the duties of their position and are scrupulous in consciously fulfilling them of course if we think of a reincarnation as a path of growing understanding learning then we will find difficulties on this path and if we revolt against those difficulties against those situations then it's as if we go back to our old habits i don't like that i don't like myself in that i don't like the others in that well the gospel according to spiritism invite us to acceptance accepting that god is giving his permission so that we are taken care of so that we can have all the opportunities to learn and that we simply go on with it and do the best with all the virtues we can put in it moral persons are kind human and benevolent toward all regardless of race or creed because they, re they regard all people as their brothers and sisters they hold no hatred or rancor or desire for vengeance following jesus example they forgive and forget offenses and remember only good deeds because they know that they will be forgiven according to how they themselves are forgiven if the social order has placed others under their tutelage, they treat them with kindness and benevolence because they are their equals before God. So this calls us to some other virtues, being sweet to ourselves and to others, being benevolent as well, forgiving us and the others in our path to improve what we have done forgiving is not cleaning and and uh, forgetting forgiving is to accept that we did things that are not to the best that we can do and accept that loving ourselves and the same with others and then doing our best with it treat ourselves and others with kindness because we are all equals we all merit the attention and the love of god moral person as well are indulgent toward other weaknesses and they recall these words of christ let him who is without sin cast the first stone they seize every opportunity to point out what is praiseworthy in other people and they study their own imperfections all their efforts are focused on being able to say to themselves tomorrow that they are better than they were yesterday so accepting limitations is the first step to do better because if we do not recognize our limitations if we do not accept 
limitations of others, then we, we, do not, we do not use all our potential of love, all our potential of doing better. So acceptance, recognizing, and willing to become more and more moral persons. Moral persons have faith in the future. Thus, they place spiritual possessions about above temporal ones. They know that everything has, that has been given to them can be taken away. And that the worst use of these goods in regard to themselves would be to use them to satisfy the, their passions. So this is a, a larger understanding of material wealth, material goods as being part of the love of God, of the love of life, that it, it is given to us to the extent that it is, that we can create an effort with the law of work to build on that, to do with that the, the more we can to construct, to help others, to build ourselves but still it, it, it's a part of what life is providing to us so it, it's not acquired for all the time and especially not at the end of, of the reincarnation <laughs> so better prepare before <laughs> and do the best already but the, the most salient point to me is this one in the definition given by the gospel according to spiritism. Whoever makes an effort to possess the virtues of the moral person is on the road that leads to all the others. Isn't it a loving sentence? Of course, as, I, as we saw, th th there are a list of those virtues. So, of course, we are not perfect. But whoever makes an effort to possess the virtues of the moral person is on the good road. So we can accept us as apprentice and work toward that goal with love, justice, and charity. To me, this is truly a loving sentence. So going on all these steps in our evolution as a moral person, at some point the time has arrived. The, the, if we can say so, the trial has arrived. When this is from the Genesis, another book of Kardec, codificated by Kardec. When humanity is ripe to take a higher degree of moral progress, one can say that the time appointed by God has arrived. Then, organic matter undergoes disturbances which can alter the physical state of living things and cause diseases. Diseases like all plagues act as stimulants to propel the human to discover the laws of nature. So a few seconds, Ago, I talked about the material wealth that is provided to us, but then diseases, diseases are, are provided to us as well. And when we look to the context that we are in, when humanity is ripe to take a higher degree of moral progress, one can see that the time appointed by God has arrived. So we are all in it together and it is provided by our loving God. I, I, we heard, well, I, I was to say I heard, but it's not true. It's Marcia, my wife heard um, one spiritist friend in Brazil um, giving a benediction to the, to the virus, <laughs> but it, it was not uh, kind of a, 
a joke or, or joke or anything like that. It was a recognition that it is brought to us as a path, as, as a step in our path. So it is not a question of a partial change limited to a country or a people. It is a universal movement which is operating in moral progress. And if someone could see all the links of light that are going from the spiritual world to the herd, <clears throat> we, we would be uh, astonished by all the, the, the continuity, the continuum that we are in between us and the spiritual world, the spiritual life. Necessary to men is the elevation of sentiment. And for that reason, it is necessary to destroy all that which excites undue selfishness or pride. An immense progress still remains for them to realize, which is to make charity, fraternity and union reign among them in order to assure to them their moral well-being. When all men shall be convinced that God is the same to all, that this God sovereignly just and good can will no injustice, that evil comes from men and not from God, they will regard themselves as children of the same father. So we can envisage, envisage the challenge of getting there to that proposal that we see from the Genesis and envisaging that challenge, we can understand that to get there, we need a strong stimulus. We need to be shaken <laughs> in our boots. So that might, that might help understand all that is going on with love. And it's not, of course, a new thing, as the Genesis said, at different epochs, superior men have sought to lead men into this way. We, we have seen a few at the beginning of this presentation. The unity of belief will be the most powerful bond of union, the most solid foundation for universal fraternity, which has always been broken by religious antagonism, which divides people and families. And here it, it talks about religious antagonisms, but we can as well talk about political antagonisms and various other sources of division. So this unity of belief that we are invited to is in fact the unity of humankind, the unity of all spirits, the unity under the law of love, and the unity that we already are in, but, that, but we don't perceive that we are all connected. But on a material plan, a step would be the unity of belief as well. The present times of the COVID-19 health crisis are an exceptional time which is permitted by God to help us move forward in the practice of the virtues essential for our moral progress. Are we ready? Well, faced with great difficulties, we all have to get out of our routine and we are more vulnerable emotionally. Some of us react by drawing on our resources of the eternal spirit and in accordance with their existential purpose. 
First, based on the law of love, justice, and charity, submission to the will of God, and the practice of good to the limit of our strength. For others, all this is unfair and a reason for revolt. It does not make sense. And they must invent scenarios compatible with their revolt, like vast conspiracies. Unfortunately, the existential void awaits them if they go on this way further. So this is my humble presentation, and I wish everyone peace. Thank you for your attention.